All right, so this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video than normal, but we have some big news in regards to Marvel Snap. Second Dinner just released today their new roadmap for what is to come in future updates. So let's just get into it. So the first thing you see on the roadmap is the coming soon tab, and that has new competitive mode conquest, card acquisition improvements, token shop revamp, ranked mode improvements, and infinite rank revamp. So the big thing that I wanna focus on for this uh, section is going to be the token shop and the tokens, because that's the one we've gotten the most information on thus far, at least at the time of recording this video. The Conquest mode is basically going to be battle mode, but simply as its own ranked queue. Rather than just having battle mode versus friends, you can now do it versus randoms for a competitive edge. Though there is some mention I saw of tickets and Conquest tickets and how to get those, and I thought that was a little weird. And I would love to be able to read all these things verbatim for everyone, but the problem is when you look at the Marvel Snap website, the Marvel Snap Discord, the Marvel Snap app itself, where they're like, this is where the information's available. It's not, it's just not there. Uh, it, there's nothing. It, it's just, some people can get it, some people can't. It's it's weird, it, it, the, just fix that fucking aspect of your app, please, or your website, make it more clear for people. But regardless, so Conquest mode is going to be coming out. That's going to be interesting. I still want to see the best of three option of that mode, uh, but we can, you know, baby steps, you know. Card acquisition improvements in Token Shop Revamp. So the card acquisition improvements in the Token Shop Revamp are a little underwhelming. This is going to be great for players in Series 3 and still making their way through the ranks, because as you know right now, if you are not Series 3 complete and you acquire tokens you're just gonna be getting the flat 100. That's it. It is not until you complete series three that you unlock the ability to get the 200 to 600 tokens. And what I'm seeing is that the drop rate for these token acquisitions are being bumped up slightly. So you can see here, there's a question from Skilled Theory over in the Discord. If you're not aware about the Marvel Snap Discord, by the way, you can go in and actually ask questions to the team and usually they will answer. So Skilled Theory asks, in the announcement you said that all players not Series 4 and 5 complete will get more tokens, but the detail shows no way of Series 3 complete players getting more tokens. Do you have plans for Series 3 complete players to acquire more tokens or not as the announcement is conflicting? So the first thing is for non-Series 3 complete players, they are making it so you can get from that range of 200 to 600 tokens even while you're still trying to complete Series 3. So that's great for them. For Series 4, he says the drop rate for 200 to 600 increases from 22.25%, which is the current drop rate for Series 3 cards, to 25%, previously the drop chance for 100 tokens for Series 3 complete players. This is roughly a 7% increase in token earn rate for Series 3 complete players. And as you can see by the screenshot of the current discord reactions the community is not super thrilled about that one it is not even remotely close to enough to make these cards accessible for players the big problem is still series four and especially series five cards feel incredibly out of reach for most players you might be able to get one a month, but with the release schedule of three per month, plus a season pass, plus all these bundles that you're expected to get or you should get because of value, it's really hard to be a free-to-play player or a limited spending player in this game. And that's where the problem is. A measly 7% increase of token earn rate over the course of a month is not going to give you much extra tokens. Let's say in a month that you normally get around 6,000 tokens, which is being generous by the way, a 7% increase on that makes it so you got an extra 420 tokens. That doesn't matter. That's not even equivalent to another Series 3 card. It's literally nothing. So 7%, I'm sorry to say, is dog shit. I'm happy for pool three players getting extra tokens. They're getting a, like a 200 something percent increase. 
for token acquisition because they're getting the 200 to 600 caches thrown in. As far as being series three complete, which is the hard part, it's funny because earlier on in Marvel Snap, we talked about having these series or pools one, two, and three, but there was also that mention of pool 2.5, which is the hell that is not being quite done with series three, still trying to get cards and getting matched up against people that have way more series three cards or series three cards in more specific decks that allow them to be more functional than your halfway complete destroy deck or death wave deck or whatever. That was a huge problem. Now the big problem is your series three complete, but you're on the outside looking in at all these series four and five cards. And you're like, I don't have all of these. And I'm going against Shuri Red Skull, Thanos decks, Galactus over and over and over and over again. And that can be daunting and discouraging even to continue throughout your game. There's some other questions going on in the Discord as well. Noodle Noggin, great name, ask three basic questions here. One, will pins be maintained through the update? I.e. if I have an ultimate white queen pinned currently, will she still be in the token shop and will she remain pinned? Two, the weekly spotlight section will disappear after the card is purchased. Will the series three carousel disappear if I am series three complete? Three, does each section have its own pin? If I want to pin Ultimate Thor and Mojo, but I also want the Shayna, the She-Devil, to rotate out of the Series 4 and 5 carousel, will that be possible? So, a lot to unpack there. But, with the Token Shop revamp, we are getting two separate... Two separate rotating cycles. Series 3 cards, and then Series 4 and 5 slash Ultimate Variants. Which... Again, this is very much targeted to players in Series 3. But here is my biggest problem with this. Yes, absolutely. You should make the game more accessible to players that are climbing through Series 3, trying to be Series 3 complete, because that's where the bulk of the cards are. Absolutely, 100%. But when you put all your time and effort into making sure that these Series 3 players are Series 3 complete you are ended up with a lot of players still unable to get Series 4 and Series 5 cards. Again, that 7% increase in token acquisitions does jack shit for the acquiring of those cards. So it's nice to have, but it's not enough. But anyway, back to the question. So there's going to be two rotating things of Series 4 and 5 and Ultimate Variants and then Series 3. Basically, Steven says, pins will be maintained. That's always the case. Every single time people have this question about pins with the token shop or whatever, pin stay, that's cool. Series 3 section minimizes itself when you already have claimed your free Series 3 card or none are available to claim. And then the Series 4 and 5 Ultimate Variant section both have their own separate pin. There is no pin for the Weekly Spotlight or Series 3 shop. So there's basically going to be a Series 3, there's going to be a Weekly Spotlight section, and then Series 4, 5, and Ultimate Variants. So it's an improvement. There's more flexibility in the token shop, which isn't set to come out, by the way, until April. And then the conquest mode isn't set to come out until June. But again, this is very much aimed at players in Series 3, completing Series 3, which again, I think is phenomenal for the game and it's necessary. But as the game gets older, you're going to have the majority of the player base be Series 3 complete. So... Where does that leave you? There's still some work to be done. This is a step in the right direction. But again, for Series 4 and 5 acquiring players, this doesn't do much. Which is actually something that's brought up by Sparkle Sniff in the questionnaires. And of course, this one, as I expected, has not had a response at the time of recording. I just double-checked it right now before talking about this segment. And they ask, making the 200 to 600 tokens available for everyone in Pool 3 is a great change. I agree with you. I'm pleased by this, and I think it's inarguable that it's an it's inarguable a boon for the health of the game. However, the further along you've however, the further along the collection track you are, the more tokens you've missed. Compared to someone just starting Series 3 when this token update launches, 
If your Series 3 complete, you will have missed on it at about 15,000 tokens relative to someone starting Series 3 after this update. When you launch the token shop, you, compare, you compensated any player above collection level 1,000 with 6,000 tokens. Will there be any kind of compensation to even out the missed tokens? I think this is a great question. Now, I understand the aspect of a lot of games that have this type of thing of like, where's my X thing? You're giving it to new players. What about mine? I'm a veteran player. Help me. Come on. Give me stuff. And a lot of times I'm on the side of I'd rather help the new players even at the cost of not receiving something myself because you are trying to pave the way for a better community moving forward. And if if I've already gotten something or whatever, I don't need to be compensated for when the game goes like free to play, for example, like looking at like MOBAs or things like, but most of the time those games in which I'm saying I'm not too worried about it and losing out on that minute compensation, they have a much better structure for acquiring things to play with. Marvel snap does not tokens are valued incredibly high. And if we look at past bundles, for examples, yes, the new Token Tuesday bundles, things like that for like, you know, 600 gold, you get 600 tokens, that kind of thing. About 100 tokens per 100 gold is really great. But previous bundles, looking at the Sunspot, the Apocalypse, those kind of $100 bundles with about 3,000 or 2,000 tokens even for about $100, It makes you feel like the tokens are highly priced. So, in that vein, I do feel like it would be nice to give some sort of compensation to existing players past a certain collection level, just the same as when the token shop originally launched. There's a lot of tokens getting missed out on, and this isn't like a $15 bundle that I had to pay for on Smite to get all the gods, and now new players can get them at a cheaper rate or whatever. That's 15 bucks. I don't give a shit. I've gotten my value out of that. This is potentially hundreds of dollars worth of tokens getting missed out on, and I think that's a big deal. So I would like to see some kind of compensation similar to what they did in the past, I wouldn't be surprised either way. If they do it, I think that's actually something I, you know, second bidder is pretty good about. If they don't do it, I also kind of expect that as well. So I hope they do it. But if they don't, it's not the biggest shock in the world. But before I ramble too much about the tokens and all that stuff, I'm just going to move forward. Let's finish up the rest of this development roadmap. If you have any ideas or comments or anything like that regarding the new token shop, regarding the new token acquisitions, the card acquisitions, the new conquest mode, things like that, drop them in the comments. Let me know what you feel. And I'd love to hear your feedback. In development, we have the PC widescreen UI. Great. Smart decks. That's the one where it's like the game chooses cards based on a archetype you want to look at. I'm sure they're going to look at, you know, databases like SnapZone or SnapFan or like all these like deck conglomerates to basically be like, well, these are the most played decks. These are the cards you have in those kind of decks and you can kind of fill in your slots here and there. So that's mostly aimed at for new players, but it's still nice. Avatars and titles by deck. That's actually really cool. Being able to swap in avatars per deck and titles per deck. I don't know if I would really do that. I think I tie the titles and avatars more so to the person rather than the deck, but the flexibility is very nice. Personalized shop. I'm curious as to what that means. Global matchmaking. Uh, Do we not already have that? Because I play against people seemingly from japan and stuff all the time uh so I, I i'm not sure and then in concept guilds and social systems cool you could have your own clan i guess pc controller support interesting seasonal audio mythic variants i'm terrified of that collectible emotes and card emojis and then test deck mode so the test deck mode is actually the coolest one of all of these though i will notice that in this roadmap unranked is un is not mentioned there's actually a couple things not mentioned unranked and then the booster magnets are not mentioned 
Uh, unranked would be a great option for this deck testing mode kind of thing. Uh, but this is really nice to be able to just go against a bot. Magic Arena has something similar. They have Sparky, which is this AI. You can go ahead and just launch a game against Sparky, test out your deck, get a feel of it, basically goldfish a couple games, see how the deck works and functions before you take it onto ladder. This is probably going to be a similar way of doing it. But where's unranked? Where's the booster magnets where you can pin these magnets that you can unlock two specific cards to either guarantee boosters for that, something similar to like how Agatha works, or at least drastically bump up the rate at which you get them. There was actually a bunch of those actual questions that have not been answered, by the way, in the Discord server of people asking what about booster magnets. There was, I think I counted three of those. So we'll see. But overall, tell me what you guys think. What do you think about the roadmap overall? How do you think about the token acquisitions, the token shop in general, the way that the cards are being presented to us? Are you happy about this? I mean, I'm personally happy about it for pool three players, but for someone like myself or a lot of you watching that are pool three complete, and for those players that are in pool three that will eventually be pool three complete at a faster rate, uh, this doesn't really seem to do much, but hopefully there's more on the horizon. There's more coming in. I think Second Dinner has done a decent enough job with the game thus far, and they've listened to feedback. I just hope they take it the extra mile. But of course, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support, feedback, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time. See ya. Whoa, this is uh, post editing Brad. Uh, I was almost done editing. I was starting to render the video and uh, I got a quick little update that the free thing with the token shop having series three in a free slot in the series four and five is weird because they're actually removing completely series three cards from the token shop. You get one free series three card a month and you can no longer purchase Series 3 cards with tokens. This is the worst fucking idea ever. I am sorry. This is horrible. So many players like myself and plenty of other players would not have a lot of the meta-defining Series 3 cards like Arrow, Doctor Doom, She-Hulk, things like that without using tokens on them. So, second there, this fucking sucks. Please change it. Revert back. This is a horrible idea. And... That's the only thing I have to add, so see ya.